Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to another warm and exciting episode of the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we look at the whiskies and bourbons available in the month of August. You know that drill, run the VT. All right then folks, before we get into today's episode, and this episode is pretty stacked from start to finish, so you wanna stick around. However, if you haven't already, go and check out the Whiskey Cove website, the whiskeycove.square.site. You can buy some fantastic premium glassware at pretty damn rock bottom prices. Just some examples here, we have a nine ounce rock glass, we have the classic Glencairn, and we also have a space eye taster. So if you haven't been over to the website, definitely go and check that out there. And also as well, we are doing a free giveaway of three, 5,000 subscriber giveaway. So what I wanted to initially do with this, I wanted to add a ball every 500 subscribers after 3,000. And doing this video, we're at about 33, 3,400 right now. So we're really close to announcing the third bottle on our list that we'll be giving away. So the first two that we have already to give away, it's gonna be the Old Forester Barrel Strength Single Barrel and a bottle donated by Alex97, so thank you again for Alex. And I know a few people in the comments were asking, this is a Warehouse K Floor 1, 60 foot 4.2%, and then this is a 54% or 108 proof Willet four year rye. So we have these two right now, but we will also be adding another four for every 500 subscribers we get before 5,000 subscribers. So make sure you are a subscriber because that is the only requirement, and we will be doing it on a 5,000 live stream. So make sure you're making periodic checks and you're checking the thumbnails because when I add a bottle, I'll put the verbiage in the thumbnail. I'll kind of put the words there as well. With that being said, let's stop talking. Let's get into today's video. And these are the whiskies and the bourbons to look out for for the month of August. You guys love these videos. I love these videos as well. It kind of just gives us a great idea of what to expect coming out this month. And as always, if you haven't seen a couple of episodes preceding this episode, you want to go back and watch them because I know some folks in the comments were talking a little bit about about the Old Forest the 1924 is probably coming out next year. But all the research that I kind of still have been able to find is that it's coming out right now or uh, should have been out already. And also as well, we are just about seeing the new Weller drop from Buffalo Trace as well. The bottle is kind of is like a little bit of a throwback to the old Weller bottles. It doesn't look like the ones up here. It looks like a completely different bottle. But with that being said, the whiskeys and bourbons to look out for. Now bottle number one, and we are going to Barrel Bourbon Company. So Barrel are releasing their Batch 35 Cast Strength bourbon so this says that it's aged six years but that just means it's aged at least six years so there's at least six year age of juice in this bottle so it's going to be a blend of a different whiskies from uh, sourced from different states there as well so what i was able to find out about those blends is that they are from uh, there's a six seven and eight year which have been sourced from indiana mg pre also a tennessee is a seven year and 13 year old whiskey and then also an eight year old uh, barrel or whiskey from Kentucky. So blends from Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Tennessee is probably George Dickel. Kentucky, who really knows there? Maybe Bardstown or Green River or somewhere like that. A lot of companies are doing blends like this. Think of like our Bardstown Bourbon Company who do the Discovery Series. Very similar blends to what's in this. So this one is coming in at 58.75% ABV or 117.5% proof. Barrel Bourbon Company go on to say about this release is that Barrel Batch 35 was created using multi mash bill barrels of spicy, earthy high rye, high proof oak forward casks blended with softer, lower proof barrels with notes of dark cherry and butterscotch. The initial blend was then layered with bourbon barrels which focused on tropical flavours and notes there. And then they also go on to say here that the type of uh, flavors you're gonna get is like a, ban a banana bread on the nose and then some herbaceous aromas there as well from like the rice spice and maybe some molasses on the palate there as well. So the mash bill, even though this is like a blend of different whiskeys from around the place, if there was a mash bill that, that was posted online. I'm not gonna read that because I don't, that's, that doesn't really make any sense unless, unless they calculated all the percentages of what each would be and then they would have thrown out this mash bill at the end, then it's pointless because they're all different barrels and there's always gonna be different mash bills there. So for this, probably expect in the region of around about $100 to $120 for this barrel cast strength release. A lot of the stuff they do never drop below $80, but I know a lot of folks are big fans of the cast strength. I haven't tried it personally. The only barrel stuff I've tried is like a single barrel and the seagrass, which is phenomenal. A fantastic summer drinking rye. So uh, be on the lookout for barrel 35 cast strength bourbon. 
Uh, next up, and we are going to Orphan Barrel. So Orphan Barrel do some interesting releases from time to time. Think of stuff like the Copper Tongue, and the most recent one was the Fable and Folly, which was actually quite a big release here. But they are back with the Indigo Hour. And as you can see, the label on the screen, a very beautiful label, if I don't say so. It doesn't really matter about what the whiskey is inside the glass. Just judging this whiskey on the label alone, it's some really great artwork. And as you can see that it is, aged 18 years 45% ABV uh, or 90 proof of course so then they go on to say on the back label here as day fades to dusk we meet indigo's hour an orphan barrel 18 year old straight bourbon whiskey this rare and beautiful liquid pays homage to the endless fields and rich stories of Indiana Kentucky and Tennessee again we're hearing that again it's very popular in the bourbon industry blends of Indiana Kentucky and uh, Tennessee so then uh, it goes on to say where our whiskey is distilled aged and bottled integral to the orphan barrel name we honor these US states by bottling the history craft and expertise known only to them as leaders of American bourbon uh, I'm not going to talk a little bit about those tasting notes there but this is an 18 year whiskey I believe the copper tongue was 15 year I can't for the life of me remember what the fable and folly year wise but the, the MSRP in the copper tongue was 100 bucks the fable and folly was 150 so expect this to jump up even more. Honestly, uh, Muckety Muck, which is kind of like a more like a scotch, is $250 to $300 MSRP there. And I believe uh, that's a 26 year. So I fully expect this to probably be hitting the $200 mark. I feel like if it's $150 or less, I think maybe if there's someone who likes to splurge on these, uh, these interesting whiskeys from time to time, 150 I think would be a solid price for this however I think this is probably going to go up to the 200s there so that was Orphan Barrels Indigo Hour and next we go down to Kentucky and we go to Wild Turkey and you might already have seen this kind of drop because it kind of dropped a little bit early however this is being released this month this is Wild Turkey and a new addition to their Master's Keep and this is going to be Voyage there so this is a, a, a part of like their multiple series of the Master's Keep I think a recently one they did was maybe the one that was called one uh, they also have a bunch of other stuff I haven't been able to ever try any of these so I, I can't really tell you if this worth the money I think MSRP on these generally sit by about $200 you're paying a pretty penny for them however with this one uh, the voyage it is coming in at 53% ABV or 106 proof it is a 10-year bourbon finished in Jamaican rum casks uh, it's the first ever rum cask finish that wild turkey has ever done so if you're someone who likes to collect whiskey uh, and what likes to find really interesting in a specific whiskey so this is the first ever rum cask finish that wild turkey has ever done so it might just be worth picking up just for that there so with this edition uh, these are eddie russell's own hand selected 10-year batch bourbon which has been aged in turkey's classic number four char and then they get those hand selected barrels and then after they've aged, they finish them in 14 year pot still rum casks, which is pretty cool. 14 years are a long time for rum to be in a barrel and pot still as well. It'll create another level of spice. When I think of Jamaican spice, I think of kind of like those Jamaican jerk type spices, like the uh, coriander, cinnamon, clove, those type, type of notes there. And also take note from the 10 year hand selected barrels. So I don't know what the distillate is on this, but I know what the distillate is on the 10 year, and that is gonna be 75% corn, 13% rye, and 12% malted barley. So that's gonna be the mash bill for this. I really, really, really wanna try this. I'm hoping that I can get it, but these masters keeps seldomly come to Colorado. But I think, would I pay $200 for this? Maybe if I'm gonna buy any one of these Masters Keeps, and I think this is gonna be the one because I'm a big fan of rum. I do like rum, I do like spice rum as well. Um, and I think that these notes are gonna be right up my street. And coming at a 53% ABV or 106 proof, I think that's uh, right there as well where I would want that. So it doesn't get too spicy there as well. And the rye is 13%, so it's not too high there. So that was Wild Turkey Masters Keep, and that was the Voyage Edition. So next up, we have a new release from Penelope. Penelope, American light whiskey, aged 15 years. So a little bit of a history lesson to just kind of figure out who are Penelope and because they've changed hands lately and where they get these barrels from, it might also be a little convoluted. So please stay with me as best you can as I go through this process. So uh, these barrels were te sourced technically from MGP. So MGP the distillery begun 
1847. And then in 1933, it was bought by Seagram's. We all know about Seagram's. And then in 2000, uh, 2007, it was sold to Pernod Richard. And then in 2011, then it was sold to MGP. However, this is where it gets even more convoluted. So in, in 2021, MGP bought Luxro. Uh, and in that deal, it saw Luxro oversee the in-house brands through the name Ross and Squibb, in-house brands such as like the George T. Remus, that sort of line. So when you buy, uh, when companies source whiskey from MGP or Ross and Squibb, it comes under the MGP branch. But if you buy whiskies in the store, it comes under the Ross and Squibb branch. So yes, MGP is still alive and kicking, and so is Ross and Squibb. So if you ever get, get whiskey from a company like Penelope, who source whiskey from uh, MGP, it is actually from MGP, but when you buy the Re George Remus and the Remus Repeal, yes, it's from MGP, but it comes under uh, Ross and Squibb brand. So they're the two differences between the Ross and Squibb and the MGP name here. So how does this all tie into Penelope? So Pen uh, MGP, the company, bought Penelope uh, this year through its subsidiary Luxco. So even though that MGP do own Penelope, uh, they bought it through Luxco, which is now Ross and Squibb. So from Ro MGP's website, le this light whiskey mash bill is 99% corn and 1% malted barley. And this is the only light whiskey mash bill that I was able to find on MGP's website. So I, this has to be the mash bill for this 99% corn and 1% malted barley. This is a 15 year, like I said, uh, and coming in at 61%. So Penelope did bring out a 13% light whiskey. And that was about $80, but that was a little while ago now. I think if they put this up uh, anywhere $150, and below, I think it's definitely worth the money there. A 15 year light whiskey. If you're someone who likes a very corn flavored whiskey, this might be for you there as well. My guess is it's probably gonna be right around 125 to 150. I think that would be a really great price. Anything less than $125, I think is a killer deal there as well. If you wanna know a little bit more about MGP, Ross and Squibb, Penelope, and all the other sister brands, maybe we can do a video on, on this where we can sit down and really delve out and go through some of that information because in that short space of time, I can see how that could be a little convoluted there. Uh, next up, and we have a new edition from Yellowstone. It is their limited edition 2023. So this is uh, the, the limited edition finished in Tokaji casks. So the limestone branch distiller master Steve Beam, yes that Beam family, announced in 2023 the Yellowstone limited edition Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This latest bourbon featuring a blend of 7, 13 and 16 year old aged bourbons and then finished in Tokaji casks. This is going to be bottled at 101 proof or 50.5% ABV and it's, they're going to have about 10,000 bottles available throughout the nation there and the suggested retail price as it has been quite a while actually with these Yellowstones is $99.99 there so I'm really it's really good to be able to see that they're holding steady at that price these limited releases are you don't see them that much but when you do see them they're not particularly too hard to get you do see them sitting on shelves as opposed to in to allocation programs there with that so that was at the limited release from yellowstone moving on we're going to go to the Frey ranch farmers and distillery so they are back and they are doing their own uncut and unfiltered uh, what they call it farm strength edition it's just cash strength here. So this is going to be coming in at uh, six, between 60 and 65 percent. So depends on what bottle you get, which is 120 to 132 proof. Mash bill on this is going to be 10 percent wheat, 11.4 percent winter rye, 12 percent barley, and then 66.6 percent .6 corn. So every bit of grain that goes into this whiskey is made on site at this farm slash ranch there, which is pretty cool. And I think they go on to say that it's all GMO and organic free for those folks at home who care about that. Uh, the website goes on to say that they always fall in love with this whiskey before they proof it down for the, to make their signature 90, uh, 90 proof 45% whiskey. They call this, as I said, the farmer's strength and they have over 165 years of farming and agricultural history. Uh, they have a 15 acre farm east of the Sierra Nevada mountains in Nevada. 
I think this is just a super cool bottle. I couldn't find the MSRP on this. I'd love to know, but I really want to get this. It's kind of just like farm to table almost, and they do everything right there. They get their own grains, they cultivate their grains, they water their grains, uh, they distill their grains, and they bottle it. Obviously, the bottles are probably obviously not from the ranch, but everything is done right there. And wow. We see some ridiculous stories relating to bourbon and made up stories and just not so good narratives, but this is a story right here. If you want to buy into a story, buy into this. I'm hoping the whiskey's good, that it can back it up there as well. Definitely looking for the Spray Ranch Edition. I know the folks down at SLB Drinks uh, love the Spray Ranch Edition, so I'm hoping that we can get some of this in. I'm not sure what the, um, I'm not sure what the distribution is like in Colorado. I guess we'll have to wait and see there. So with that being said, we have some honorable mentions today before we get going here. And that is Heaven Door, Heaven's Door Essential Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This is gonna be one of their own distillate releases. It's gonna be at, aged at least five years, and it's gonna be coming in at 46% ABV or 92 proof. MSRP is about $55, very affordable. 70% corn, 25% rye, and then 5% malted barley. Uh, new Riff are out with a new Sour Mash Single Malt, so uh, an American single malt, but it's gonna be a Sour Mash, which is quite unique, because I haven't really heard of those, so it'll be interesting to see how this is. This is gonna be aged at least seven years, coming in at 55% ABV, or 110 proof. Much like a lot of this stuff, this is probably gonna be about 65 to 70 uh, dollars, which is pretty good value for money. Single malts, American single malts aren't my cup of tea, so I can't give good advice on them. Uh, they go on to say that this is matured in a variety of barrels, new charred oak, toasted oak, red wine casks, and Portuguese brandy, and then sherry casks. Bottled a cast strength. And then lastly, Colorado's own 291 whiskey are back with the E batch, and this is going to be the number 12, coming at a 60.8% ABV or 121.4 proof. Uh, this is going to be um, MSRP on this is going to be about $150, and this is a, their four grain wheated bourbon, two mash bills for this, corn uh, malted white wheat and rye from 2018, and then corn malted wheat and malted barley from 2021. And take a breath. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget, if you haven't already, definitely subscribe because you do not want to miss out the notifications and the updates about our free giveaway here, there as well. So keep checking. As we get closer to 5,000, we'll release some more details of finalizing that there. But be on the lookout for 3,500 subscriber mark as we release a new and exciting, and you do not want to miss, a new and exciting bottle, and I will tag it in the thumbnail there as well. So if you have any questions, you can shoot us over an email at the Whiskey Cove. Uh, at gmail.com and don't forget if you like something a little bit more interactive and you have Facebook go on to Facebook and check out the Rocky Mountain Whiskey Society link is down below and go and join our group we have like 750 members and we just love to talk whiskey and we just love to talk a little bit about the videos and just whiskey in general so go ahead and check us out I've done enough talking I can't I can't quite get my words out to this point so as we always say on the channel as we drink through the world's whiskey one glass at a time cheers